it is interesting and, and important to remember that it is language that not only guarantees our freedom, free exchange of ideas in which one is allowed to say anything, in which one would hope everybody observes the decencies of debate and, and of good nature and is not cruel and unkind and uh, mocking and uh, derisory, unpleasant, uh, vicious, uh, or, or indeed whipping up uh, violence. As long as ideas are exchanged freely, then we can more or less guarantee some level of stability within our society. But the moment we begin to use special language for special people and special, special terms of, of insult, then we can see very clearly, and history demonstrates it time and time again, that's when people are suddenly, uh, ordinary people are, are able to kill. And language is at the root of it. And I suppose that's why we have to be careful about our language, or at least it's why we have to be alert to it and we have to think about it. It is a, a massively difficult thing to get your head around how ordinary people in each one of these genocidal moments was preceded by language being used again and again and again to dehumanize the person that, was, that had to be killed in the political eyes of their enemies. They were subhuman, they were ape men, they were rats, they were vermin, they were a bacillus, they were a virus, they were anything but a human being. You're constantly getting the idea that they're not actually human then it becomes possible to do things to them that are inhuman and lacking humanity.